let's start with a bit about the background to the checklist. So, as you know, even though many of you don't disseminate Cochrane reviews regularly, um, we do use an awful lot of different uh, ways to disseminate different uh, Cochrane reviews. We use press releases, social media, plain language summaries, podcasts. Uh, we often write for various journals, um, such, et cetera, et cetera. And we do that in a lot of different formats and in a lot of different languages. And in Cochrane Norway, we've been working at this for about 20 years now. And sorry, I'm having technical problems here. Yep. So originally, when we started working with this topic, we made quite clear distinctions between clinicians uh, as a target group, patients and the public as a target group, and policymakers. Uh, but as we carried on with this work, we did see that they were often sharing the same challenges when it came to when it came to understanding the results of Cochrane reviews. So now we basically distinguish between people who are familiar with the type of research we do and everyone else. And this is something to bear in mind uh, when you uh, look at the checklist. So when we develop different products, what we try to achieve is to provide a reasonable representation of the evidence. So we want to provide a representation that's sufficiently complete, nuanced and unbiased. No matter what kind of dissemination product you're making, that should be a goal. But in addition to that, we also want to provide a good user experience. We want the information to be easy to find. We want people to understand it, obviously. Uh, we also want to give information that's useful uh, and credible. And last but not least, we want the information to be desirable and non-alienating. We want people to actually want to read whatever product it is we've made. Uh, and feel like it's for them. Um, and in the very many types of products we make, there is a lot of good stuff uh, that does achieve these goals, but there is certainly room for improvement. Uh, and for this reason, last year, um, the, uh, Cochrane called for more guidance on these issues. So the aim was to improve the quality and the consistency of our products. And in the beginning of this year, we started working on the checklist and guidance, and we've now recently finished this guidance. So the aim of the checklist is to, uh, or the aim of the project is to develop a checklist of core principles for dissemination for anyone disseminating Cochrane reviews. Uh, so this tool is for anybody, a review author, an editor, a center staff member, a member of a CRG or field, or a multilingual team, or somebody outside of Cochrane for that matter. But the aim is the same, to improve the quality and the consistency of your product when presenting the findings of a review. Uh, and as I said earlier, the main aim is to improve communication with non-experts. So clinicians, patients, the public, policymakers, journalists, anybody who is not an expert in systematic review methodology. The checklist is specifically designed for systematic reviews of effectiveness, even though we do have other types of reviews in the Cochrane Library. But uh, we would assume and we've tried in practice and found that most of the checklist is relevant for other types of reviews and also for other types of research. But the focus is very much on reviews of effectiveness. Uh, a little bit about how we developed it. Uh, our starting point was a checklist that we have developed uh, with other hats on as part of the Centre for Informed Health Choices here in Norway. Uh, we then carried out a literature review. We went through an advisory group made up of Cochrane stakeholders. We carried out user testing among Cochrane uh, contributors. And we tested the checklist on examples. And we've done this in several rounds until we ended with the last version. But this is obviously not going to be the final version. We're assuming the checklist will continue to be developed and continue to improve. Uh, 